sure that you have a good and stable internet connection. If you have an earphone or headset, we recommend you to use it so that your voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. During the team and group discussion session, all participants, please use the chat box to deliver the questions. If you have an earphone or headset, thank you for your cooperation and consideration. Voice can clearly and loudly to be heard. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. May God always bestow uh, prosperity and health to all of us. Welcome to the guest lecture series on SDGs today on Tuesday, March 22nd, 2022. Uh, I'm Harris from ITS Global Engagement and will be your master of ceremony and moderator for today. Today, our session would be with special speakers, uh, Ms. Maria Cecilia Fasano from National University of Misiones, or UNEM, Argentina. And I would like to say very good morning to you, Ms. Maria. How are you today? Very good morning. Hello. Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, I heard that you just got sick and just came out from hospital several days ago. Is it getting better now, Ms. Maria? Of course, thanks to the kindness of Ms. Remy that she was helping me to prepare this presentation. I'm here with you today. Thank you. Uh, sounds good. We hope you get a very complete recovery soon, Ms. Maria. Uh, I'm sorry, again, please. Yeah, uh, we hope you get a very complete recovery soon. Thank you so much. Uh, before we start our agenda, here are some technical rules for all participants. First, please adjust your name or ID screen using format name underscore campus. And second, during the lecture, please turn off your microphone and only turn on the microphone when the moderator gives the chance. Third, please fill your attendance at bit the the slash attendance underscore GLS. Our committee also send the attendance link in the Zoom chat room. For participants who wish to get an e-certificate and stand, please fill the attendance 15 minutes after the session starts. For participants who wish to ask questions during the question and answer session, please send your question at bit.ly underscore now b.ly, I'm sorry, b.ly slash gls underscore qna underscore one. The link for questions listed in the chat room as well. Uh, or you can ask directly by using the raise hand feature later. Uh, and today's GLS on ADGs will present sustainable development goals, cooperation, prosperity that will be delivered by Ms. Maria Cecilia Fasan. We will have lectures first, and the lecture would be 75 minutes, and then the Q&A session will be afterwards. For participants, please write down your questions through the link that has been sent to the Zoom chat box. We will have the Q&A sessions before closing agenda. Now, uh, before we proceed, uh, yeah, now before we proceed to the next agenda, let me introduce uh, our speaker. Now, without further ado, uh, let's invite me. Oh, I'm sorry, I have to uh, read the uh, CV from Ms. Uh, Maria. Okay. Ah. Yes. Okay, now I see it clearly. Okay, Ms. Maria Cecilia Fasano from National University of Misiones Argentina. Uh, like I mentioned it before, uh, she has educational background now. She is ongoing uh, for doctoral. Uh, yes, now she is doctoral student on agronomic sciences, National University of Misiones. And she in... Okay, you can mute your microphone, please. And in... 2018, master, uh, yeah, she got master in sustainable development, National University of Misiones. And in the same year, 
uh, she got superior uh, diploma uh, from University of Peking, National University of Missiones. And in 2013, uh, yeah, uh, she got biological science licensure from uh, National University of La Plata. And from work experience, uh, Miss Maria in 2008, uh, she was researcher in National University of La Plata. And from 2006 until 2013, uh, she was faculty member of Natural Sciences and Agraria, National University of La Plata. And from 2016 until present, uh, she has been as assistant professor in ecology department, National University of Misiones. And from 2016 until present as well, uh, she has been as director of English course for rural community aiming to empower women with worldwide tools. It's such a very, uh, you know, very impressive uh, position, I think, with, with the uh, very generous uh, purpose. And uh, Miss Maria also uh, get uh, some awards uh, in 2018. Uh, uh, she got Erasmus Plus to Bailistock University of Technology and in 2012, uh, she got woman in Fumi Science by Buenos Aires Science and Techniques Committee. Uh, There's all a brief background with uh, CV from Ms. Maria. Uh, now, without further ado, let's invite Ms. Maria. Time is yours. Thank you so much, Mr. Harris. So this presentation is made thanks to the Institute Technology Sepul of November. And it was made the introductions by Mr. Muhammad Wahyu. So I would like to thank him first and thank your institute first for opening these doors to Argentina. Also, um, this team is made for this presentation with Ms. Rennie and Ms. Harris. And I would like to invite you all to join. If there is any question that you would like to do, please don't hesitate and raise your hand and let's talk about it, okay? Would that be okay? So, sustainable development goals. We live in a society where it seems that we are not very sustainable, right? So, the title of my presentation in the next slide is... Next slide, please. Sustainable Development Goals, Cooperation, Prosperity. I am speaking right now from Argentina, from the Misiones province of Argentina, which is located in between the republics of Paraguay and Brazil. And like Mr. Harris said, I am now teaching in the National University of Misiones. It's one of the smallest rural universities in the country. And now our aim is to work with women in this land because we understand that our culture in this region it started from the Aborigines, the Guarani people. Mm -hmm. By the women, the Guarani women's hand started our culture in this region by respecting the sustainable sustainable cycles of nature. So we are going to talk about a little bit about that and how our culture is nowadays being done in this region and what we can do about it. So in order to place this conversation in a broader uh, frame, let's go to the next slide, please. In South America, the way of living is being marked 
mainly by multinational corporations. Different companies owned by uh, potencies around the world establish the politics in every country. So aiming to education, aiming to uh, give fortitude to the state or government in order to regulate the policies is a key element in this life and land development in South America. Education forms groups, education forms people to cooperate. And in that sense, we believe that prosperity and technology can arrive to the people also besides companies from all around the world. And we can cooperate and coexist in the land. In that way, we understand that the development goal number 15 may be related with the 16 in the sense of inclusion and justice. And in this sense, women's role is a key element. Women's role add to the use of the land, the sensibility on how to do it, when to do it, respecting the life cycles, the sustainability cycles on the resources recovery. So including these teams and in this inclusion, women is key for the development of South America. And now we are going to talk about the development of Misiones province, the land use in Misiones province in this part of Argentina. Next slide, please. So, my topics of investigations are about soil. And what about the soil? How it is being formed and how this soil in this part of the world can have a specific structure by itself. So the soil depends on the climate. It depends of course, in this sense, where the location of the soil is. In this case, Misiones province is located in a subtropical weather uh, with a lot of rainy season, usually. This year was a typical, we're going to talk about it. And of course, in this um, climate, subtropical climate, the policies that are being made adapted to this climate are key to maintain the soil resource. In that sense, we are going to finish speaking about some power dynamics that we could make in the soil maintenance and in the soil and land use. Next slide, please. In this slide, you can see what this subtropical weather looks like in the ecology that emerges from the soil. <clears throat> what you can see is the upper part of the Atlantic forest that is characteristic of this region. The Atlantic forest is ruled by high statue trees, four meters, three meters high, and they are the rulers of this jungle. These are key element in order to sustain the structure above the soil, maintaining the soil of this part of the world below 40 degrees Celsius, which is the average summer temperatures. Next slide, please.
So here we are going to see now focusing in specifics in the geography where this Atlantic forest, forest is located. This Atlantic forest, this Misiones province, and also the university where we are developing this investigation and education programs is there, located in between the republics of Paraguay and Brazil. Argentina goes all over the last part of South America. But Misiones is like a hand in between these two republics. And it's a UNESCO site because it's a natural wonder protected for the rest of the world. In order for, for everyone to visit, these are, this is the place, the house of the Iwasu waterfalls. The Atlantic forest in this Iwasu waterfalls surrounds this environment. And in this place, it's been set the Iwasu National Park as a relic of this Atlantic forest. So in this picture, you also can see at the borders of the Iwasu River, the color of the soil. You can see that the color is red. And the Atlantic forest that is over it, that is protecting this soil from the 40 degrees Celsius temperature is, a key, is key in this ecosystem. Without this protection, without this forest protection, this soil that is being called oxysolex, this soil is absolutely degraded. With this coverage, with this coverage of high trees that maintains temperatures below 40 degrees Celsius, these oxysols maintain microbiological diversity inside of the soil, which means that with this micro life, with these microorganisms that lives inside this soil by the coverage covered by the Atlantic forest, there is a lot of fertility that is being held in this soil, in this kind of soil. Next slide, please. Argentina is the land of the mate. What is the mate? The mate is a national beverage. We drink it as a dessert. We drink it in the evening, at the beginning of the morning. It's like a kind of tea. So inside this pot, you can see that is their derva, derva mate. It leaves from a tree that has been called also derva mate and is native, is a native tree from the Atlantic forest. So the Atlantic forest holds in its biodiversity a tree that makes one that gives, that produce one of the main drinks that the whole country and also Paraguay and Brazil drinks all the, late, all the day long, you know? So this forest is a um, biodiversity reservoir, but also it is the mother of a tree that is significant in our culture, that is, uh, main element holding the Jervamata tree for making these drinks for all the country. Next slide, please. So, this is how we drink it. It's a small pot and this custom comes from the Guarani, the native people. 
at the right side of the pot, you can see how the leaves of the germamante plant is being melted. Oops, we went to the first one. Okay, I'm so sorry before. No problem. Uh, I think... No problem, Mate. Over there, yes. Okay. That one. You may continue, Maria. Thank you. Thank you so much. So in the right side of the pot, you can see there are the germamate tree plant melt. So that is the germamate that we'll place inside the pot. And then you can drink it with hot water. Just this picture, just to show you how we drink it. Next one, please. Now, this is the Derva Mate plant. This is the Derva Mate tree. But as you can see, is there in this picture, Atlantic forest, like we were seeing in the first slides? Of course not, right? There is no Atlantic forest around this native tree from the Atlantic forest. So what had happened? Well, this tree that were harvested in the beginnings by the Guarani people, native people, were industrialized. This tree was industrialized and the crops from this tree were made in a monotypical way. By monotypical, we meant that one tree was cropped, was seed next to the other, taking away the Atlantic forest coverage of the soil. So as you can see, the soil itself around the Derva Mate plant started degradating without the Atlantic forest coverage. Of course, for the harvest, this is absolutely much more easier than harvest the Jevamate plant inside the forest. But the soil without coverage is not, absolutely not sustainable. Now, why these kind of crops are being made is being made in the province with these characteristics is just a matter of economy and the companies that rules the harvesting of the gerbomate plant and the gerbomate crops. In this case, the input, the economical input that has to be made in order to obtain the crop is cheaper than if the crops has to be obtained in, from inside the jungle, from inside the Atlantic forest. So now, next slide, please. This is the way that native Guarani people were making the crops. The big trees of the Atlantic forest holding the whole structure and giving shade and maintaining the temperature below the 40 degrees Celsius that we were talking, it was the average temperature. In this way, the soil can recover, can have a coverage which does not compete with the Gerva Mate crop itself and also gives protection in order to the soil not to be eroded. Now, this kind of, uh, of crop making is a concept, is made onto a concept that we have to adapt the crop to the natural system. Adapt the crop to the natural system that emerged from thousands and thousand years of evolution from this climate. So it's not the other way around. It's not making the crops and erasing the natural ecosystem. Now this is being understood, but guess what? 
the leading people from the, that allows this kind of system to be held in Misiones are be, because of women. I'm not saying that only women has this kind of systems, crop systems. Of course, men are doing this kind of system too, but the understanding that in, why this dynamics has to be made are mainly women. Next slide, please. This is um, a picture to show you the thousands of studies that are right now showing how this kind of soil, subtropical weather zone, oxy soils, soils are being degraded if the Atlantic forest is not being restored over the soil, protecting it. Next slide, please. So this way that nat how native women were making the crops, adapting the crops to the jungle and not the other way around, promotes something that we call biological fertility. When we started this presentation, I was telling you that micro bio, microorganisms can live and can promote biological fertility if the Atlantic forest is protecting the soil. And that is the case. The studies that we are conducting right now are aiming to measure the biodiversity of microorganisms in different kinds of soil management. In the jungle, when the jungle is, is protecting the soil, the big native trees are protecting the soil, inside that soil, there is a huge abundance of microorganisms that they you could, um, dispose the chemical compounds of this soil that is being held in this structure, in this physical structure, to the roots of the Jeva Mate plants and to the roots of any plants. Now, for big corporations, the Atlantic forest is not a business. It's not a business to have crops inside the Atlantic forest. So big companies promote monotypical cultures and a highly input of agrochemicals fertilizers, insecticides, pesticides in general, in order to manage first chemical um, fertility only, not biological, and in that sense also to make the producers of Jerva Mate dependent on those chemical compounds. When all this movement of adapting the crops to the Atlantic forest started and started growing, imitating how native people, native Guarani people made this crop, the companies started uh, trying to establish more and more chemical fertilization. And of course, this was not being a very big business anymore. So, next slide, please. Fires started. There was from December 2021 until February 2022, we had fires all over the province of Misiones, Corrientes, which is the next province, and Entre Rios, which is the third one next to Buenos Aires, which is the capital of Argentina. Thousands of, he of hectares were lost in this sense. And next slide, please. The north of Argentina, in the north of Argentina, including Misiones, Corrientes, and Entre Rios province, 
2,000 kilometers were burned and 30,000 hectares were lost. So the 30% of the total surface of North Argentina uh, was burned in this sense. And um, this is not a scenery that would like, that is favorable for the crops in the sense that we were talking, in the sense of maintaining the natural ecosystem. But this is not um, a sad scenario. Of course, it was sad, but not now. Why? Next slide, please. We have a history of no regulation with the companies. We have a, a history up to this day of less than 3% of women partic participating in decision making on agriculture. So we started, we already started 10 years ago to incorporate women in the fields, incorporate women to, ag to agroecology incorporate women to making the crops and especially to germanic crops. We started to make capacitations from university to the small producer, family producers, not only with corporations, but yes, inviting corporations. We started to financial educate all the corporations, we started to make financial education for women. We started to teach English to women to start in order for them to start opening the views to the rest of the world, to the possibilities of cooperation that are in the rest of the world. Okay, this summer we got the fires. Yes, it's true, but you know what? It's like a wake up call, a wake up call to tell us, okay, you were doing good things. You are making a change. If this does not, if this change were not, was not happening, fires would not have taken place. You were making a change. The uh, uh, Misiones province and the way to make agriculture in the Misiones province is changing. Our consciousness on incorporating more education, women, corporation and small family producers, um, trying to incorporate nowadays also native communities, native Guarani communities to our policies on how we make agriculture. All this is happening. So now, what do we need to do? What do we need to do in order to prevent these fires? And not only that, but also keep go growing in cooperation, keep growing on association, keep growing on education. Well, let's go to the world. Let's go to build international teams. That's why I'm telling you that the title of my presentation was Cooperation Prosperity. I think that not only here in this part of the world, the fires were happening. In every part of the world, we have wars. We have things that are happening right now in our communities. So, well, let's cooperate. Let's try. And this is a beginning. This is a beginning. Start talking. Start knowing our faces. Start trying to build specific goals from this meeting on. So, yes, the change is happening and the change will be happening, starting from us, starting from our home, starting from our classrooms, starting from our families on. So, next slide, please. I am so thankful for this opportunity. Thank you for you all that are listening, that I hope we can be talking from now on, on the rest of the time that we have left. 
And if you have any questions, I'm here to respond right now and in the future with the next slide addresses. Next slide, please. This is my name and this is my address. I'm at your disposition. For, with any question that you have, that you may have, or any cooperation that we may build. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, thank you, Ms. Maria, for the very enlightening lecture regarding uh, SDGs number 15, Life Online. It's such a pretty, you know, interesting presentation. Your research, uh, it's like, uh, open our eyes, uh, you share about the condition in Argentina. Uh, I think uh, every country has a similar challenge how to preserve, how to maintain, uh, you know, the quality of our land. And the challenge is different maybe from one country to another in Argentina. I think the challenge is more challenging because, you know, because of the 40 degrees Celsius subtropical a uh, weather in Argentina becomes its natural challenge to maintain. So, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I would like to remind the participants again uh, to offer you. Maybe you have some things in my in mind to share. Some things about the condition in your country uh, regarding the soil uh, quality, or maybe you want to ask questions uh, regarding. Uh, Ms. Maria's uh, presentation just now, please don't hesitate to, uh, yeah, to put your questions in the link that, that is provided by our committee in the chat box, or you can directly raise your hand with the features, with the Zoom features, and just jump into the discussions. Uh, uh, I, yeah, uh, I'm, now I'm checking the sheet uh, from the questions uh, link. Uh, the spreadsheet, uh, and I got one question, I think. Uh, yeah, the question is, uh, may I know the cause of big fire in these three provinces that you mentioned it before? Is it because of the summer weather or intentionally done by the companies? Maybe you can, uh, you know, explain it again, Ms. Maria. Yes, thank you for that question. Very interesting because I was not very clear on that aspect. Yes, there are three main reasons why these fires were set. The first one was, yes, we, ha we have had a draw season. It was unexpectedly without any rain this summer until February. So yes the risk of fires were absolutely high. Now, the second um, point is that the degradation of the soil is considerable in our land. So in that way, a lot of uh, wood that it was cutted and let it dry was like, you know, spots where if a small sprinkle of fire led, it will cause a fire. And of course that happened. And the third spot was that yes, some companies were setting on purpose, fires on natural reservations areas. Okay, so uh, it, it's caused by both, uh, could be from uh, summer either, and the, not, yeah. On the other hand, uh, it's uh, intentionally done by the uh, corporations. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I hope uh, it's, uh, yeah, it, it can answer uh, your questions. Thank you very much. Uh, he or she didn't mention his or her name, Ms. Maria, so I can, yeah, just from anonymous. So no I think the, Yeah, I think the question helped us to uh, know more about, uh, yeah, about the fire conditions there. Thank you for the answer, Ms. Maria. And the next question is, uh, how big or how big or many are the companies who are working behind or working on uh, yer uh, on the urban sectors? Uh, are are they so many uh, companies there, or maybe the company is not too many, but it's like a big companies. Maybe you can tell more about 
Sure, sure. The big companies, the multinational corporations that led, actually leads our province per capita income are forestry companies that implanted in our province non-native foreign pines. So those pines have a lot of resins inside that are highly inflammable. Native trees does not have that resins because of course the high temperatures. So the second companies that rules our per capita incomes in the province are tobacco companies. And tobacco is used to um, take away, cut the jungle and implant tobacco. And the third cluster of companies, yes, they are from Java Magic product producers. And those clusters of companies, yes, they are locals. So these policies from university intend to strengthen these clusters of company of Gerva Mate companies in order to uh, make a buffer in the per capita incomes from our province. Am, am I being clear? Is being understood what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's uh, it's clear, uh, Ms. Maria, okay. uh, for telling Thank about you. the companies. Uh, maybe this is my, uh, you know, my curiosity, my personal curiosity. Uh, is there any strict regulation from uh, Argentina government maybe to, you know, to regulate these companies in order to uh, maintain uh, the environment or the soil? The regulations from these companies were made 15 years from this point. So the regulation, the laws were, um, are absolutely out of date. Companies are inside of law, but outside of date in that law. So there is no way so far to have um, legal regulations and that's why I was saying education is the only way out because we have to have lawyers to update, to make the social uh, force in order to update these laws. Okay, I see. Uh, so, because the company has been exist since 15 years ago. And exactly. Yeah, and yeah, yeah I, I can understand how to, you know, to regulate, uh, Today, because they they have been existing for such projects, and no state regulations to you know to to, to rule them. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Exactly. Would you like to continue for the next questions, Ms. Maria? Of okay. course. Because, yeah, I of got a lot course. of a lot of questions actually here. I'm glad. Thanks so much. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. For for this time. Uh, yeah, the questions uh, we clear names. Uh, so it's from Aulia Harumi Baharisa uh, from ITS, ITS student. Uh, the question is, what can we do as a small action to prevent disaster on soil and agriculture thing to be happen? Because in my opinion, the most strong or the strongest thing to prevent the damage is from government regulations. Yeah, it's a very good question. Please, Ms. Mary. Sure, thank you so much for that question. What we can do in order to prevent soil degradation? Excellent question. The first things first is to see what is the natural environment in your area. If your natural environment is a jungle, try to imitate and to adapt the construction, the agriculture, the um, every infrastructure that you will make to the natural environment. Natural evolution is wise. Let's go with that natural evolution, not against it. If your natural environment has only prayers uh, with no big trees, imitate that kind. You will be adapted with all the infrastructure to the natural environment, you will be good. 
Okay, thank you very much for the questions. I hope yeah, it can answer the, uh, your questions. Olia, thank you so much. Uh, I think the next question is still uh, related with the previous uh, questions from Olia. Uh, the question is like, uh, preserving the land and its diversity is challenging in many countries, including Indonesia. In Indonesia, coal mining in Kalimantan Island becomes the hot issue a couple months ago. The dilemma always exists in how this mining business gives a huge country income while we leave the conservation issue behind. Uh, in your opinion, what is the government supposed to do in that such conditions? Maybe regarding the policies, Ms. Maria. Absolutely. Thank you so much for that question. Minery, if, did I understood correctly? It's a, a minor company that is in, in the region. Yes. Yeah. In Argentina, we have um, mountains, not in Misiones province, in the side with Chile in the west side. So we know what is this situation because it has a huge impact, impact in the uh, per capita income from the whole nation. And the situation is, again, the regulation on the company, how the state, the national state will regulate the company. We all need capital in order to grow. I don't think that the answer is to forbid anything. I mean, I think that the answer is to regulate. How do we regulate? How do we, in from our place, are able to affect policies in order to regulate the companies? How do we start discussing the situation? How do we, if we do not have social strength, how do we generate social strength for the policies to uh, be able to hear us? Are we prepared? Are we with the education and experience enough to be able to generate social force to be listened with the policies for the politicians, with the politicians, to, to be able to sit and talk with them. And are we able? And in, when we start asking ourselves those questions, usually we find ourselves that we are not. We are not able to uh, yet have the social strength and the social organization to do it. But no worries. That's why we are talking right now. Let's form that social strength in between us. Let's keep educating us to be able to form a group of, with high education and experience to be able to sit with the politicians, with the policymakers, with the companies, and let's do goals, specific goals to stop this degradation. Okay, thank you very much. It's such a very good answer, I think, uh, for Ms. Maria. I highlight the important uh, terms, which is social strength or social force. Without it, uh, yeah, government cannot listen to you, or maybe, and silence is not the solution. So yeah, silence is not solution. Silence means uh, acceptance. That Absolutely. We, yeah, we, don't, we don't do nothing unless see it, witness it, but without any actions. And personal action will not be enough to be heard by politicians. And so we need to hand in hand to create a social strength and force uh, mm -hmm. to, for a specific goal. Uh, specific goal is also <clears throat> another term that I highlight because, you know, without a uh, specific goal, we just give our critics an, like an empty voice. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, we, uh, I, I think it's very good suggestions from Miss Maria. And maybe I would like, uh, do you mind if I continue with the, uh, several questions more. Of course, of course, I'm here at your disposition. So please, let's keep with the questions. Okay, very glad to you know. Uh, yeah, you you don't mind to answer uh, the questions. Uh, 
Uh, I think this is a very general question, but it's okay, I think, uh, to know uh, Miss Maria's opinion. In your opinion, how we as citizens can protect the forest? Because as we now know, there is a lot of illegal logging, which causes the damage of ecosystem. Yeah. Yes. Uh, does it happen Excellent as well question. in in in, yes. your, in country, Miss Maria? Yes. Yes, excellent question. Thank you so much. Uh, illegal logging is a worldwide situation, especially in tropical forests. Why? Because there is such a huge amount of logs and of trees that is very hard to truck. And also the, um, the companies that are doing illegal loggings has the media, the trucks, in order to enter the forest and be able to extract. Usually communities that are around the tropical forest are not equipped with the trucks and the media that companies that are making illegal loggings has. So what can we do? One specific thing that I think that is key that is a key element is when we are going to buy something, let's track it, where this comes from. Um, and if we don't have the label where it says where it comes from, let's choose another product that has the label where the, tracks, the, the tracking device has been made. Um, there are um, certification signatures, certification logos, certification processes that made some labels very specific in that sense. You can read and track from any part of the world through this certification process where these logs or where this product product, any product comes from. I think that is one specific thing that we can do because the market leads the production, always. There will be no production if the market does not buy. So uh, the, the buyer has so much power. We as buyer has so much power, our conscience in which product to choose is the power to start the change. That is one. And the second is, um, again, social force. Uh, if we have, like here in, in, in Misiones province, 3 a.m., 3 a.m. in the mornings is the time where you can see some trucks with illegal um, logs on it. So there were some groups that were gathering and just coming to the route, to the roads and taking pictures and taking pictures and uploading to the social media. Of course, with precautions because some of this situation can be dangerous. So this uh, social media were anonymous. So the pictures were uploaded uploaded in an anonymous way in order to be uh, preventing to be seen. But the pictures with the illegal loggings and with the plagues, the number of the plagues were displayed. And sometimes the government did an excellent job in stopping that logging. And the third thing that I will say is let's get creative because yes, we have the power as buyers, we can take pictures, but I'm sure we can figure out so many other ways to stop in a very pre precautious way, with care, with calm, with in a peaceful way, we can get creative. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, uh, for the answer, yeah. First of all, the easiest way to do, uh, based on Ms. Maria's suggestion, is our consumption behavior. I do, uh, I agree on it, uh, indeed, of course, because yeah, some of us just spend money to buy this, to, to buy that, without paying much. 
how is this product from, from where, from what materials. And most of thing that we buy, maybe we uh, contribute to this environment destructions. We do not know. So to be more self-critical, to be more, uh, yeah, to, to always think critical, I think it's a very good uh, to, you know, to contribute to this uh, environment preservation. Thank you very much. Uh, and the next questions. Yeah, I got several questions. I'm so um, glad. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're as youths. What can we do as youth people? And can you share us how about the movement from youth people in Argentina to protect the forest or environment? Or maybe do you know? I'm sorry, are you... the internet cracked a little bit. Uh, okay, if I can share what again, please. Okay. Uh, how about the movement from youth people in Argentina to protect the forest or environment, Ms. Maria? Maybe yes. you know some youth community, you focus on environment. Absolutely. Thank you for that question. Very important question because uh, we have to picture the economical and uh, social reality of my province. My province has less than 1% of the population with higher level education. So 3% in between 3 and 5% of our population reach secondary level. So in that sense, being this said, I like you to picture that just an elite of people have access to higher level education, healthcare, and land ownership. So in this sense, it's very hard for the rest of the population to take care the environment because people need to survive. The surviving situation is acute in this part of the country. So there is, uh, we have three frontiers with Brazil and Paraguay, and there is a lot of smuggling of anything that you can imagine. So the social, social political situation of the majority of the population is being in the aim of survive day by day. So we are not able to judge or to say anything about if a person hunts for living, burns for a piece of land to live, or if sells some illegal logs in order to have food on the table for their children. So that is the basic situation. Now, in this context, we have Greenpeace, we have an ecology ministry in the region, we have even in the agriculture ministry, a lot of policies that are in papers very good in order to hold the jungle, to preserve the jungle. But the reality is stepping in other steps. So how do we do? How do we make this equilibrium in between what we say in papers that should be done and what reality is showing us day by day? Education is one step, but also um, reaching vulnerable communities and not giving only the solution for that day or for a short period of time, but instructing people in hand works, works that can be uh, helping them to survive day by day is a key element in the social structure and in the jungle preservation too. Okay, a uh, very complete answer for Miss Maria. Yeah, I think uh, the education for 
you know, the knowledge level for the environment awareness is closely related to the uh, fourth SDG about quality education, how education can bridge people to be aware, more aware about the environment matters. Uh, I do agree with uh, Ms. Maria. So if you, if you have like a, you know, an environmentalist community here, uh, try to educate people is one of the efforts actually to, Absolutely. you know, one of the effort to, uh, to sustain, to maintain uh, the quality of our environment, but it's still closely related. And thank you. We, I have another question. Uh, it's from Yuga, uh, but I think for uh, this time, I would like to invite uh, one of the participants to ask directly. Uh, would you like Yuga Praina Pavitra? To uh, yeah, to join our discussions and uh, deliver your question directly, Yuga. Are you there? Hi, Yuga, Raina. I think yeah. You. Hi, Yuga. Don't be shy, it's okay. Just you know, we're the exciting yeah. discussion. It's okay, Alice Maria. Absolutely. We are living okay. here with internet connection that comes and goes. So maybe that happens too. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you got, if, if you can hear me, uh, I would like to invite you to join our discussions and deliver. Uh, your questions to Ms. Maria directly. I would be glad uh, to see you in these discussions. Or maybe another participants, you can directly raise your hand, or if you prefer to type your question to the link, it's, it's okay as well. Uh, maybe while well, we are waiting, uh, you got to, uh, to deliver his question directly. Uh, I will come to another question first. Uh, the questions, uh, I think it's quite related with gender. Uh, why are women closely related to environment or land, such as Watani people in your country? In Indonesia, we have several land conflicts between people, face-to-face -face government or companies that also led by women. Yeah, I think it's very good questions. And yeah, why? Now I'm starting to, uh, to ask the questions to me, to myself, uh, because yeah, why am I, why woman uh, is closely related uh, compared to men? And we know the phrase mother of land. There is, but there is no father of land. This Maria, <laughs> maybe you can uh, give your opinion on it, please. Of course, of course. Um, I uh, Argentinian people has a, a very big mixture in between natives and European ascendants. So I myself, my grandma was a, a virgin. So one of my grandma. So I, I know what I'm going to say because it's her, you know, it's my grandma. Um, as women, we have our periods with a lot of hormones. So in ancient periods, in ancient years, where the women walk, vegetables, life grew. Because with the periods and the hormones in the periods, there was, it was a natural fertilizer. That's why women, it's all related to plants growing, to agricultural, to growing things. That's why it's Mother Earth. That's why it's Earth related to women. So in this sense, Guarani women were very, very conscious and they were respecting about the crops, especially in our region, the um, the crops that they were make they were making were always surrounding the houses, always surrounding where they grew children. So that's why I think it's one of the reasons why women are related to earth, to soil. Now, 
What about the land on the Guarani native people and the rest of the population? Yes, the Guarani nation was a Guarani, it was a nation that was held in between the republics of Paraguay, Brazil, and Argentina. And it still is, but it's not recognized by the actual geographical regions. So it still are, there still are relics of Guarani people, but not in the wife that it was before. They are more and more restricted to reserves, to reservations. And nowadays, they are reaching a level of education that has, in my province, one lawyer. So that one lawyer, which is a man yet, we're working for the women, and this uh, lawyer is slowly but surely impacting in the policies of the capital. So certain permissions are being held now for the Guarani people. Um, so far, it was like a situation of just helping, giving houses, giving things, but not education and uh, policies on long term policies. And with this intervention of this Guarani lawyer is now these policies being slowly but surely walking to establish uh, mainly education for Guarani people and reaching Guarani people to universities. But in the sense to be adapted, the, the ways of teaching to the Guarani people. They are not able to stay inside closed classroom. So the university, we should, we have to adapt to Guarani people to go and teach outside, to go inside the jungle and teach them inside the jungle in open spaces like they learn. So that's our main uh, challenge now with Guarani people and is related to Guarani land establishment. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you shared something new about uh, Guarani people there. And I, 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 I do agree with, uh, you know, the sense of women in nurturing their children. And yeah, I think women pay more attention about the environment, the lands, uh, how to live and how maybe the family survive and children grow up with good conditions. That's why, so for those who are women in this, uh, or in this Zoom, uh, you must uh, be proud of you. You're born as woman and you have more uh, generous uh, in a sense as a woman rather than men. I think, yeah, it sounds sexist, but we have, I think most of us, uh, we have to acknowledge it. And do you mind if there's another questions, Ms. Maria? Is it okay? Absolutely, absolutely, okay. yes. Okay, uh, another question. Uh, it comes from Ivy G.S. Paragu from uh, Surigao State College of Technology, Philippines. Uh, the question is, over the longer term, uh, the physical structure of the soil is being depleted. Is government has a response on this issue since Argentina are among biggest, the biggest corn and soybean supplier, and it might be a fact, and it might affect the production of this crop. Amazing question, gorgeous. Um, Argentina is so big, so, so big, that um, except for my province, the whole rest of Argentina has another kind of soil, which comes for several processes, but are different than from Misiones province. The soils from the Pampa, which is the main region of Buenos Aires and the central of Argentina, 
It's being called molly salts. No matter the, technis, the technical words, but the point is, in those areas were areas with no big trees, no jungles, more like savannas with small prayers, grasses that grew and made um, organic soil, a very, very fertile and organic soil. Nowadays, the a lot of soils from that, from that region are being absolutely devastated. Why? Because big companies sell fertilizers and sell another kind of agrochemicals that are pesticides. So if you promote soil health, respecting the sustainability of the soil regeneration, you don't need that much fertilizers or pesticides, all the contrary. So big companies are not in favor because of course the business will be off if these natural cycles are respected. And they are huge companies, um, huge, huge, huge companies and are not Argentinian only, yes? They're coming with interest from outside of Argentina. Also, this, if we respect the sustainability cycles of the soil, the production cycles should be longer than are today. That means that the average production in weed, in soya, will decrease. So in the main part of Argentina, the Pampa, the Buenos Aires production, are not very interested in this kind of cycles. In Misiones, the soil, which is red, is different, is tropical. Uh, the forest companies are the ones that leads these cycles. So usually, these companies lead the policies in Argentina and in the provinces. Nowadays, there is a huge movement that sometimes is being categorized like a hippie movement, but tries to respect this kind of cycles. The movement is being called agroecology movement. It is not only in Argentina, you can find it in Spain, you can find it in other countries in Europe also. This agroecology movement try to respect these cycles mainly of the soil and therefore everything, every cycle that grows about the soil, right? So this agroecology movement has 20 years at most, 30 I can say, but it resembles the way to do agriculture with techniques, with technology that comes from the native people. So nowadays the our ecology movement is trying to implement a, a native way of doing our agri agronomics and also try to implement technology to speed up the processes of production. Finding that balance is the talent challenge right now for the agroecological movements. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Miss Mary emphasized about uh, the cycle of chemical fertilizer and pesticides. Uh, uh, yeah, chemical fertilizer and pesticide uh, usage uh, for soil regeneration that the that actually it's, it doesn't take place only in Argentina. I think in Indonesia we face similar uh, cases uh, among our farmers uh, because there are a lot of uh, huge companies as well. Uh, Ms. Maria here, uh, we try to uh, change to disturb the natural cycle of, uh, you know, soil generations because farmer in Indonesia like uh, have a very short time to have a, to have a harvest. So uh, 
the, this, this company is always like promoted by using this chemical fertilizer and pesticide. It makes your crop uh, be, can be harvested uh, sooner than it's supposed to be. And, but uh, at the same time, actually, it uh, uh, decreases yeah, decrease the quality of soil and the land itself. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And Mr. Harris, may I add something on yes. what you are saying, please? Please. It decreases the soil quality and also we have to think all those chemicals that we are using in the crops, where are they going? Of course, there is a chemical degradation for the UV rays from the sun, yes. But until what point? It's being studied. Actually, it's not. So those chemicals, oh, they are going to our food and from our food to our brains, yes? And what a coincidence that those companies that promote our chemicals are also the companies that hold pharmaceuticals all around the world to heal us from diseases. So there was a say that I was always loved from ancient Rome, Romans that says, your food should be your medicine. If our food has chemical and is poisoning us, we will need pharmaceuticals. If our food is ours, as organic as we can, as healthy as we can, if we can grow our own food in our backyard, in our small pot, well, we know that that is our medicine that we are ingesting every day. So we are being a little bit more independent of on pharmaceuticals, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We did, uh, Sumaya. Uh, yeah, food like medicine. Yeah, we, we know that uh, as, as young, maybe it's very familiar. Uh, and I found a similar phrases. Uh, I think you are what you eat. You are what you, yeah, you are what you eat means uh, what you eat determines what kind of people, what kind of persons uh, we are. Yeah. Uh, very, very good, uh, very insightful uh, discussion, I think, uh, this, uh, this afternoon in Indonesia. And maybe that's why people who live in a rural area or in a village have like uh, longer life expectations than people uh, in the city because they have their own food resource uh, behind their home, maybe. And, they eat something which is very organic, very healthy, and, and they, they can uh, live longer than people in the city. Okay, thank you very much. And because uh, Yuga will not join, I think, uh, for certain reasons, uh, I will just read uh, his questions, Ms. Maria. I think this is the uh, last question that we have for, uh, for these sessions. The question is from Yuga. Yuga is uh, ITS student uh, from technology management. Uh, how to deal with soil conservation problems when faced with economic problems? In most cases, economic issues are more important than conservation. Even though without the availability of good soil, humans will not survive in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for that question. How do we deal? How do we deal with economy if when surviving is the priority? How do we deal if our mindset is set to survive? I think that this scarcity mindset is something that should be placed in discussion. It's true that there will be no food in the future, or maybe in the cities, we can grow food in a garden, in the wall. It's true that there will be no food, or maybe 
in my backyard, I can grow my food. Is it true that there is no way to do agriculture but to make monoculture? Or maybe there are other alternatives. I think that the questioning of concept that longer for longer periods are being held as truth is uh, one way to start. Like we have no water, no quality water. We are going to have no quality of soil. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Let's wait a minute. What about if we keep talking, if we keep educating ourselves, the people that is around us, and we keep discussing these things. Is it true that in my backyard, I will not have a good quality soil? Is it true that maybe in my community, I can make a, the, the square where the kids go to play, maybe a community art over there and grow some vegetables over there? Where are the options? Because I think that one very big lie is to think that there is no alternative at all. And when we lose hope, that is the biggest change of all. It's a chain that is, like I say, that like, like place a chain in, a, in our neck when we lose hope. Finishing the fires in this fire season, everybody was like that in, here in Argentina small families losing everything, thinking, okay, no, I'm going to sell my land to the companies. That is the way when we lose hope and we think that there is no other alternative, that is where um, we are very, very able to be manipulated. But if we could, we, if we get together like this meeting, then I'm so grateful to be invited. If we make meetings and we try to educate ourselves and we, if we try to make projects together and build social force, we start seeing that those alternatives emerge by themselves. They present us. So let's keep hope. That, I, that will be my idea. What do you think? That's very good. Yeah, we are the options. Don't let ourselves losing the hope. Uh, don't give up with the conditions. Uh, we are in our hands. So, yeah, actually, I, I, I do agree. I think, yeah, I, I'm also grateful to be invited in this very first discussion with you, Ms. Maria, and with this uh, amazing participant with these questions. Thank you very much for this fruitful discussion, Ms. Maria. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, every of your opinions uh i think it's like uh motivation sessions i think it like opens our eyes about the environment awareness uh, it opens our eyes to how to think clearly how to think uh critically uh in, in this in the, in the kind of dilemma condition between environment interests and economical interests Thank you very much for giving all of your opinions, your knowledge to us. Uh, we got a lot of benefits of your thoughts, Miss Maria. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you so much for the, the excellent lecture of today, of course. Uh, I would like to invite all the audience, ladies and gentlemen, please give applause to our speaker by using the Zoom reaction feature. Thank you very much for Miss Maria. Furthermore, uh, we would like to present a certificate wording to our speaker today. Uh, Ms. Reni, would you like to present certificate wording to our speaker today? And this is the certificate to Ms. Maria Cecilia Fasano. So nice. With batik. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Maria. We will send the soft file version of the certificate to, uh, to you sooner in the future.
and we will also send it to your postal address with the full sign of our rector, Ms. Maria. Once again, wow. thank you very much uh, to both our speaker for your valuable time and uh, contribution to this guest lecture series. And that your lecture is, yeah, of course, beneficial for all participants in understanding uh, sustainable development goals, especially uh, on live online. Uh, now, before uh, we end our lecture today, we invite all participants, as well as the honorable speaker, to take a group photo together. Therefore, we would like to request all participants to turn on uh, your camera, please, and show your best smile. Okay, so you smile. Okay, I see some face there. You look great, guys. You look very uh, handsome and beautiful this evening. Okay, uh, but Rini. Uh, hi. Hi, okay, Wendy. Miss Maria can see you. Definitely. Oh, so okay. nice to see you all. Hi. Thank you so much for your cameras. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you guys for opening your camera. Uh, I will take the picture by myself. Okay, show your best smile. Uh, I have two slides of screen here. Three, two, one. Okay, and the next slide. Three, two, one. Go. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, guys, for uh, joining you. these sessions. Now we have finished the group photo. Thank you. And for the participants, uh, please fill the feedback form through the link, bit.ly slash gls underscore feedback that you can also see on the Zoom chat room. Please be reminded the participants who will get STEM are the participants who come on time. Join this event until the end and also fill the feedback form. And if you want to take credit transfer from GLS on SDGs, don't forget to submit your second TWIL or TWIL for GLS on SDGs. Concept and principle sessions as one of the requirements before 31st March to be.ly and uh, slash GLS underscore TWIL or TWIL. And for tomorrow, we will have the last topic for GLS on SDGs in March with interesting topics for SDG 17, partnerships for the goals that will be delivered by Ms. Uh, Jayani, yeah, Ms. Jayani K. Ratnayaka, bringing the topic public-private partnership for sustainable development. Okay, you can see a uh, poster. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Don't forget. And finally, we have reached the end of today's guest lecture series. Once again, thank you very much to all to our honorable speaker and all participants for the attention and cooperation. We hope to see you again in next agenda tomorrow. Don't forget to follow our social media on Instagram and ITS. International Office and Facebook ITS International Office and keep updated of our programs. Stay safe, stay healthy, and please enjoy the rest of the evening. Goodbye, see you, and thank you very much. Goodbye, Ms. Maria. Thank Bye. you. Goodbye, all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Series on three, two, one. See you tomorrow, everyone, and stay safe. All.